made it to Sandstead. There's my happy parents. Hi guys. I'd give you just a bit of an introduction to uh, my trip to Wales. Unfortunately Sarah didn't join me, um, she's busy working on our first workshop um, and th this was just a quick weekend getaway just to spend a couple of days with my parents and, and my relatives in, in South Wales. So my parents they were meant to go uh, to Wales when they were visiting us for the holidays in France but uh, due to Covid they weren't able to, to make the trip so they decided they were going to spend a couple of weeks uh, touch base with the with our, our Welsh relatives again. Um, and I decided to join them. And fortunately, it was a relatively inexpensive and a nice quick trip uh, over from uh, Limoges. Um, so I joined them in, uh, in London and we, we drove down yesterday to, to Swansea. So, there's, uh, so I'm sure a, a few of you know that uh, I was actually born in Wales. Um, in fact, I was born in the town of Neath, which is up the Towie River from, uh, from where I'm standing now in, in Swansea. Um, but when I was two years old, we emigrated as a family to Canada. My dad had a job at uh, Ontario Hydro waiting for him, so we made the trip and, uh, and I grew up in Canada. So I definitely uh, you know, identify as a Canadian, but I have strong roots and I'm very proud of those, those strong Welsh roots. You know, we still have a lot of relatives. Actually, the majority of our relatives are still in the UK and quite a few of them are in, in concentrated in this area. So between Cardiff and Swansea and the Mumbles, which is behind me there, um, you know, there's still lots of relatives. And growing up in Canada, I, I really didn't have as close a relationship with my, my aunts and uncles and my extended family as much as I would have liked to. So it's uh, it's nice now that I'm I'm a lot closer. You know, I'm I I want to reconnect with them and I want to reconnect with all of my family. You know, hopefully we'll we'll get a few more people over to the chateau, which would be wonderful. But also, uh, the UK is so much closer, so we can uh, we can make trips over here. Hopefully with Sarah next time too. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely lovely. You can see I'm on uh, on the beach here. It's low tide uh, in on Swansea Bay, um, but it's it's great. So you know we'll we'll spend a couple of days with my parents. Um, you know, living walking down memory lane because uh, you know they always do when they're here. Because of course they grew up here. They they spent most of their life here until we moved to Canada. In fact, actually, I think if I remember correctly now. They've spent more years in Canada than they did in Wales. Um, it's close, anyway. I, I know it's close, but um, yeah. I mean, obviously, the the Welsh roots and the the, the pullback is is uh, is very strong. So, you know, it's it's great. It's it's nice to be back. You know, I have a lot of memories here. Fortunately, um, as a kid, and actually all my life, I've come back to Wales. You know, with my parents and uh, on my own as well. And I've I've been back enough to know the area somewhat you know i mean i can drive around it which is great you know i, I have um memories of of my grandparents um you know going to their houses and spending um summers with with them here so it's got very fond memories for me and i love coming back here it, it it's a bit of a touchstone it's uh you know sort of touching back to my roots and and uh my relatives and and you know making sure that that heritage still stays there i mean i'm definitely canadian and i love being canadian but uh it's nice to to have that other side of me that's uh, very much um welsh We're now in Swansea. Um, I had a lovely evening last night, nice sleep. Um, and we come to Swansea Market in search of the most Welsh thing that I can think of, Welsh cakes, uh, for a mid-morning snack. But uh, it's changed a lot in the years that I've been coming here. Um, but the Swansea Market is still a fantastic place to come. Lots of market stalls, as you can see around, you know, 
I'm, I'm with my parents and my mom went straight for the cockles because it's one of her favorite things. It's our, uh, selfish, I believe. Um, uh, we're gonna have lunch or uh, late lunch with, with some family later on, but uh, exploring Swansea. relatives tonight and we're gonna have a lovely dinner up at the top of the tower here should be a fantastic view from there this is the Swansea Museum tramway center this is actually the earliest known streetcar or street tram in the world believe it or not and it used to run from Swansea here to the Mumbles which is just around the bay So we've come down to uh, the marina area of uh, Swansea, and this is actually where my mom lived when she was young. You said between 12 and 15? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So which one was it? That one. So that was the house there that you, yeah. you grew up in, or at least had a few years in. Yeah. And that was where my parents slept. Right. That's the living room here. And then we, the kids, all the kids, and that's where Philip was born. Wow. So we're talking five kids in that home. Seven. Seven kids. Sorry. Yeah, seven kids. Seven kids. Seven kids. <coughs> in that house. And wasn't the nicest so, area at the time. It goes right back. You know, right. there's a, the, all the kitchen and everything is there, you know. But you're it's saying it's not quite as nice. Uh, it wasn't quite as nice as it is now. No. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't the best of places to live, but now it is. It is really, and they made them all in apartments because there's a lot of rooms going back. Right. Like you had, my parents used to have all that room as a bedroom, and then you'd have a middle room, and then you had the bathroom on the other side. Wow, and you, and it's it's strange to think because you, you're right by the harbor here, and that's always you know in yeah. the modern world it's. It's the fanciest place to be or on but the water. You, you couldn't see that. Right. That was, that, that was a dock. Oh, so okay. There was nothing really there. There was nothing here. So all I these buildings were. None of this. None of it was, was here. here. No, when we were here. Wow. Well, there you go. There's a bit of the history. Yeah. And now it's uh, regentrified. Now it's a very classy place to be. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> So that would have been your backyard, yeah. your nice long ones. Oh, we'd come out onto Pier Street. Right, which is now the back, well, the little development in here now. So that's the back of the houses there, and you would have had this backyard to play in, which yeah. is kind of nice. The long backyard. So this is Wind Street, which used to be the banking sector business sector of the town but now it's turned into a lovely little area for restaurants and a place to hang out um, in the evenings apparently it gets quite wild here on the weekends This is the Dolphin Hotel in downtown Swansea. It's where John and I had our wedding anniversary, uh, wedding uh, reception, almost uh, 51 years ago. And uh, we went there, we had a wonderful reception, and then we left and drove up to London for our honeymoon in Spain. There you go. Yeah. It yeah. Was it was all this here? All of the rest of the building? Yeah. The buildings were all here. Yeah. Yeah. The market was behind and everything was here. And the church wasn't far, right? The church the was... Church, there was a parking lot in between here and the church, so we were able to park there, walk to the church, and then we had a car that brought us here for the... Uh, the church is down that way. Right. Wow, 
Well, we've managed to do it. We found a great market stall that was making fresh Welsh cakes. And this is how they come, throw them in the bag, dump a bunch of sugar over top of them. They're still warm and God, they're lovely. For a whole long. Oh. Yeah. There's nothing better than a fresh Welsh cake, I tell you. Mmm. When they're warm and come right off of the um, skillet, I guess, covered in sugar, absolutely amazing. So we're having lunch with my relatives um, from a lovely spot overlooking all of Swansea. So Swansea Bay and then up into the, the city itself. And a spectacular view from up here. All the way over the bay to the Mumbles. Today we have come to Cardiff. Um, Cardiff's the capital of Wales and my uncle lives here, in fact. So yesterday we spent the time with my mother's side of the family, so the Rhea side. Uh, and today we're going to meet up with the Cole side. So we've come to Cardiff. You see Cardiff Castle in behind me there. It's a pretty big city. It's, uh, you know, regentrifying like uh, any major city in, uh, in the world. But uh, there's some lovely, beautiful old architecture here. And as I say, big castle in the middle of it. Well, I've made it back from Wales. It was an absolutely lovely weekend. So good to catch up with relatives that I haven't seen in uh, 12 years, actually, most of them. Fantastic trip. So good to see everybody. Looking forward to being able to see them again and hopefully more often now that we're closer in proximity than we used to be. I've decided to show you uh, how to make Welsh cakes. This is something that I enjoyed when I was in Wales. Um, about 12 years ago when I was there, I picked up this <laughs> postcard and I've been making Welsh cakes based off of it ever since. So, let's go through the process of making Welsh cakes. I first added four cups of flour, self-rising flour, to a bowl uh, with a teaspoon of baking soda. So let me grab my teaspoons. So one teaspoon baking powder. And we'll give that a stir. Also using a pinch of nutmeg. Pop that in. Oh, I love the smell of nutmeg. The next stage is to add butter. So it is actually a whole cup of butter. So these are certainly not for your low calorie diets. And the trick with this is they say to rub the butter in. So I'm gonna cut this down into smaller chunks. And then you literally rub it with your fingers into the flour. And yes, I am wearing my Welsh rugby jersey. Figured I would look the part whilst I'm doing my Welsh cakes. It was a great trip to Wales. It was so good to see everybody. 
nice to enjoy some time with with family and of course enjoy some authentic welsh cakes from the swansea market when they say that recipes come with a, a dose of love i think this is the point it's all with, to, to do with the hands in this case you know you are actually having to get your hands in here and work the butter in with the flour. And yes, I have washed my hands properly. Don't you worry. And what you're aiming for is to get it crumbly so that the flour and the butter together create a bit of a crumbly dough. It does take a few minutes. You sort of want to break down all those little pieces of butter and get them well worked into the flour. And then it should start to clump together and become crumbly like that. Okay, so once you get your dough, uh, the butter and the, the flour mixed up, so it's nice and crumbly, the next thing is to add the sugar and the currants. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to use raisins instead of currants because I couldn't find currants at the local grocery store, but they'll do the same thing. So, it's three quarters of each. So I'm gonna take a quarter cup. And get some sugar out. There's one. Two. And three. So yes, butter, sugar, I mean, you just can't go wrong. This packet is about three quarters. I've used this package before, so we're just gonna dump the whole thing in and continue to blend that together. Get them firmly mixed. Now comes the gooey bit. This is when we add a couple of eggs to the mix. and a little bit of milk. The milk is one of those things that you've got to sort of play with. You don't need a ton of it, usually. What you're aiming for here is a thick and stiff dough so that you can roll it out and form the biscuits. So you just mix everything in. This is like I say, it gets to the gooey bit because this is when everything starts to stick together. You don't want to over moisturize this stuff, otherwise it, uh, it becomes a real pain to try and work with. Uh, and if you go too far, it starts to, to break apart. But you do want it stiff enough to be able to form good biscuits. So I'm gonna add a little bit more milk As I say, it's not an exact measurement. The recipe sort of says milk as necessary. So there we go. Now it's starting to feel as it should. All right, on to the next step. Okay, next step is to get this rolled out. I'm gonna dump this out. I like to use the two pieces of parchment method. So I'm just gonna get this started with my hands. And then stick a piece of parchment over it and start rolling out. The aim is to get to about a centimeter, maybe two. Depends on how thick you like them. All right. 
So then you would just use a cookie cutter because um, we actually don't have one at the moment. I'm just going to use my what, half cup and press out some Welsh cakes. And then we will do these on the griddle. All right, we'll roll this back up. Because the dough is actually quite a dry dough, um, I don't feel a need to do too much extra flour to keep it from sticking to the surface. It sticks a little bit to the parchment, but not too badly. All right. Okay, so we've got all of the Welsh cakes now cut out into shapes. Um, as I say, they're about a centimeter thick. Um, and I've got my hot plate warming up here. This, this is ideal, I find, for, for cooking Welsh cakes on. You can do it in a skillet um, quite easily. You definitely want something that's a flat bottom rather than something with a texture to it. Um, and your heat, about medium. And the whole idea is you just want to sort of brown them on both sides, you know, so they're cooked through, but they have a bit of a crispiness to the outside of them. So let's start adding them on. And you can hear them sizzling away there nicely. The trick is you want to make sure that they don't over brown um, or burn, definitely. So rule of thumb that I find is that they're a little sticky when they first go on and as they start to heat. But as the underside starts to brown, they move a lot easier on the surface. So you kind of know that's a good time to start checking to see whether it's browned up enough to flip it. Mmm, smells good though. I mean, how can you go wrong, right? It's butter, it's sugar, it's, you know, flour. <laughs> the perfect recipe. Ah, see, that's the kind of color that you're looking for. So as I say, you can sort of feel when they start moving a little easier. You can get the spatula underneath them. And you start to get that lovely brown color to them. You can also sort of hear when you tap them. They're still a little soft. They firm up and you can hear just a little bit of a um, a tap to them when uh, when you know that they're done or they're ready to come off. You just keep flipping them. Take a look. That's that's starting to get that great tap sound. You see they're starting to brown up nicely. And that is probably a perfect round for a Welsh cake. So I'm going to stack these on a plate as they come off. So when I get a layer top of my fist, I can just take a little bit of sugar and add it on the top. Now they're still warm. And I will do that with subsequent layers as, as they come off. Well, there you have it. Nice and simple, Welsh cakes. They're a simple recipe, but boy, are they ever tasty. And you should see, like, when you open them up, got that nice sort of warm, doughy feel. There's sort of like a texture similar to a scone or scone, depending on who is, uh, is saying it. Um, but obviously a little sweeter um, and with the raisins. Mmm. So good though. One of my favorite things to eat. There you go.